There is no religion anywhere on the planet that gives women as much rights as Islam does. That is just disgusting. If you were in front of me now, I would just, I would slap you if you said things like that. Welcome back to Rationalized Assertions. Today, I'm joined by Sister Amina. I invite her on to share a story of how she came to Islam, but there's been some very exciting news in the interim. Andrew Tate has reverted to Islam. Pop G. So we're going to hear a little bit about her story, and then we're going to talk about the revert you all really want to hear about. Welcome, sister. Tell us how you came to embrace the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Well, one day while I was on the bus riding to my classes at the university, um, this man came up to me. He was very handsome and he uh, gave me a ring and he said that uh, I should just think of him whenever I looked at it because he thought that I was as beautiful as the ring was <laughs> and he was looking for, you know, he wanted to give it to a girl who was as beautiful as the ring. So. Uh, then he walked me to class, and after that, every time he was going to his own classes, every time that I was on the bus after that, he would walk with me to my class and then go to his class. And we got to talking, and his name is Hassan, and he told me all about how, you know, even more beautiful than the ring was the Prophet Muhammad and all the things that he came to teach and how he changed the world with like telling people to value women and how important women were in Islam and how carefully they were taking, they, that they were just taken care of and protected. And before Muhammad came, all the Arabs, they just kill all the girls. Anytime they had a daughter, they just kill her. And whenever Muhammad came, like he told them how you shouldn't kill girls, but instead you should be very, very careful with them and like protect them and care for them and uh, Hassan showed me just the really great treatment that women had in his society and he introduced me to his family and they're all really sweet and kind they're like the nicest people I've ever met um, he has two sisters and I met his mother too and she was so nice to me and he explained to me how uh, the hijab and all of that stuff, well, I'm getting ahead of myself because first, to be able to marry him, uh, I, I didn't have to convert necessarily if I was a Christian, but I was more like a spiritual person. So like, you know, I went to church, but then I, I, also really feel like every way is its own spiritual journey and you can like follow what you feel inside and we're all reaching toward the same thing all these different paths up the mountain and then and whenever I was introduced to Islam I thought it was like more beautiful and it was this this more peaceful path up the same mountain where, and it had such a high value of women. So after I married Hassan, he explained to me how the hijab works and that it's about protecting women and keeping them special and safe and away from all the dirty things of the world. Like I don't even go out to do shopping because Hassan does that for me. So, like, I mostly go out to be with his family and friends like that or to go to the mosque. But, you know, he explained how, like, a woman is like a beautiful piece of candy. And if you keep it in a wrapper, it stays perfect and beautiful. But if you take the wrapper off and it just goes out, it gets all dirty and disgusting. And I realized that I wanted to be a special piece of candy too, like his special piece of candy. Mashallah, what a beautiful conversion story. If there's one thing us Muslim men love above all else, it's women. Now, the Ummah is currently going crazy over the news that Andrew Tate has reverted to Islam. Double top G. As a good Muslim woman, I think you must be very excited as well. Well, I 
don't know why I'd get excited about anybody converting to anything because like I said, you know, we're all finding our own path up the same mountain and you have to follow what's in your heart. And I learned about my heart when I met Hassan. And maybe, you know, if that's his heart, that's wonderful. We should always celebrate someone finding their own hearts. But it doesn't really matter, like, what what that heart is, does it? Because we're all going to the same place and we all want the same thing. Yeah, I'm not really sure what you're, what you're getting at here, sister. Uh, you oh, know, well, there's only one true religion. Al Islam, of course. Well, I mean, it's expression of the true religion. And as far as who he is, I'm, I'm going to have to look him up because I don't know who he is. Um, I've heard his name before, but I thought he was like a bad guy or something. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it says that he's the king of toxic masculinity. I don't think that's very Islamic. Well, you got you got it mostly right. I mean, Andrew Tate is a king. Cobra Tate. <laughs> and now that he's embraced Islam, are you just so happy about how all his subjects have no choice but to convert? Well, I, I don't think that that's how it works. I mean, everybody finds their own journey, their own path. Of course it is. Of course that's how it works, you silly woman. And this is pretty much the way Islam has always spread. When an important political or tribal leader was bribed and he converted to Islam, then all his subjects were forced to convert as well. In Islam, this is one of the two perfectly peaceful ways that we invite people to our religion. Thus, there's no compulsion because we peacefully invite them. Either their leader invites them after he is converted and says, you know, you, you got to convert now because I'm your leader. Or the other peaceful way, and this is my favorite, is when you take a sword and you hold it up to someone's throat and then they voluntarily convert to Islam. That means there's no violence taking place at all. And you would know all these things if you weren't barred from participating in the Islamic education system. Well, I, I, I meant that he wasn't a, a king that who has subjects. Like, whatever he does, he doesn't tell people what, what to do. He, you know, people follow their own path. He's not their boss. You're not making a lot of sense here, sister. I'm starting to see why Muhammad peace be upon him, said that women are deficient in intelligence because everyone knows that kings have subjects. I mean, you don't call someone a king unless they have subjects, unless they're in control of other people. But anyway, let's leave that aside. Aren't you just so excited about our new revert? Well, I've been Googling him the whole time that you were talking, and he said some really awful things. I don't know why you would celebrate someone converting to Islam who's just so terrible unless, you know, he converted to Islam and then he realized how Islam actually treats women beautifully and he changed all of his ways and he said that he repented of everything that he did before. But I don't see anyone celebrating him like saying that everything he said about women before was wrong or about anyone before was wrong. I don't understand. Yeah, I don't think you know what you're talking about. I mean, our prophet often talked the same way that Andrew Tate talks about women. Escape the matrix. Yeah, he didn't use any curse words as far as we know, but he, he said the same kinds of things about su subjecting women to, to men's desires and how women can't be in control and all that kind of stuff. Plus, wasn't it Abu Bakr who once said to go suck the clitoris of a lot in response to a perfectly reasonable question from a pagan? So you see, this is quite Islamic. I have no idea what you're talking about. What you don't know about Islam, sister, could fill an entire book. A book you wouldn't be allowed to read at Madrasa. Well, I, I, I see here that it also says that Tate used to make fun of Muslims, and he said that Muslim men beat their wives into submission, and that they don't allow them to go out, and that they, they will hit them if they try to go out, and things like that. He said all kinds of awful things about Muslims. Oh, sister, bless your heart. 
Andrew Tate wasn't mocking Muslims. He wasn't making fun of Islam. He was just telling the truth about what Islam teaches. Oh, gee. Our attitude of standing up for what's right and making sure that all of the women know that they need to be submissive to their husband is one of the things that attracted Andrew to our team. I don't believe that at all. Well, if my husband beat me, I would go to the police. I, no Islamic. Uh, but the, I don't believe that this is Islam. This is ridiculous. No, no one hits women. That's not the way Muhammad was. He said that you have to treat them carefully like, like princesses, like the beautiful candy all wrapped up. I can see why our prophet said you women folk are deficient in your religion. This is a matter that was decreed by Allah in the Quran, where he says, men are in charge of women by what Allah has given one over the other. Those wives from whom you fear arrogance, advise them, forsake them in bed and strike them. Furthermore, the prophet himself ruled on this matter. When Aisha brought a woman who was complaining about being beaten until her skin turned green, he said nothing about the bruises, but he did conclude that she was lying. And thus he handed out no punishment for her husband who had justifiably beat her for her disobedience. But all of Muhammad's early converts, so many of them were women. They were mostly women. Why would everyone have, have converted to Islam if Islam didn't raise women's rights? It, it, had, it always did, and that's why so many women saw the beauty in Islam and why so many women wanted to be married to Muhammad. Oh, my poor, poor, mentally deficient sister. Don't you know that real women love this stuff? Why, just look at the example of our beloved brother, Andrew Tate. Back when he was trying to transition from being a kickboxer to a media personality, someone, probably Tate himself, released a tape of him beating a scantily clad bombshell in his bed. And what happened when the media asked her about it? Well, she said that it was completely consensual. It seems that she wanted to be beaten and Tate wanted to beat her. I don't believe you. Islam elevates women's rights and that's not the way women are. And everything that you've said is disgusting. Alhamdulillah. Women have so many rights in Islam. Islam totally values women. Women are just the jewels of this religion. Why, for example, women have the right to be married at any age whatsoever to a man who is handpicked by their father or other male guardian. They also have the right to give their consent by remaining silent. They have the right to do what their father decides in the matter of this marriage, regardless of what they desire. They also have the right to be paid for their services with a roof over their head and food on their plate. And all they have to give in exchange is their complete and total submission to everything that their husband asks of them. Women also have the right to provide many children for their husband. They have the right to share their husband with up to three other women of his choosing. They even have the right to bear witness in court at half the value of a man's testimony, of course. And after all of that, women get the privilege of making up the majority of the inhabitants of hell because of the mental and religious deficiencies that Allah created you with. But if by chance, sister, you are one of the few women who Allah has not decreed to the fire, you will get the unending joy of being held captive in your heavenly abode until it's your turn to be deflowered again and again by your man. Isn't it just so wonderful? There is no religion anywhere on the planet that gives women as much rights as Islam does. That is just disgusting. If you were in front of me now, I would just... I would slap you if you said things like that about our beautiful prophet and our beautiful religion. Oh dear, I think you spent too much time in the West before you reverted.
And it seems you caught the transgender violence. Only men like hitting and punching things. A women, they want to take it. They want to be punched. This is how Allah attended things to be. So stop acting like a man and saying you want to be violent. I don't have to listen to you say things like that. That's true. You don't actually have to listen. You don't have to understand or know anything to be a good Muslim. You just have to submit to whatever the men tell you that Allah says. Well, I'm out of here. But before I go, I saw a news article just now because as you were talking and talking and talking, I was Googling and Googling. And it said that Andrew Tate claimed that ISIS are the true Muslims. I fail to see your point. Well, isn't Islam the religion of peace? <laughs> oh, you're serious? That's just something we say to trick the Kafir into converting, or at least leaving us alone while we build up our numbers. Once we're in the majority, then we reveal the lie, and we subjugate or kill all the unbelievers, just like Allah wanted it to be. Are you saying that Hassan has been lying to me this whole time? I don't think so. Of course he has! Alhamdulillah! But didn't Muhammad forbid lying? All the religions in the world forbid lying. Exactly! The Prophet said it is not permissible to lie, except in three cases. Something a man tells his wife to please her, to lie during war, and to lie in order to bring peace between people. This first one covers the family. The second covers interaction with non-Muslims, with whom we are always at war. And the last covers interaction among Muslims. So you see, sister, there are barely any cases where it's permissible for a Muslim to lie. But don't worry. Over the last 1400 years, our scholars have spent lots and lots of their time thinking up ways we can say things that are technically true, but have the exact same effect as a lie. This is the beauty of Al-Islam. We can do whatever we want while keeping the letter of the law and Allah approves of it. Muhammad really did say that you can lie to your wife just to make her happy and that you don't have to ever be honest to her. Alhamdulillah. At the beginning, you asked me about whether I was happy about Tate's converting, and I, you know, I wasn't then, but now I have to say that I am. I'm happy because it let me know what Islam is really about, and it let me understand that everything in it actually was a lie, everything that I've been told, and that all of these people who are happily embracing Andrew Tate, not because he's repented and he's going to change and he's going to, you know, follow in the way of Islam. They're saying that he already is and that he's a perfect representative of Islam. And if that's Islam, I don't want to have anything to do with it. I, I can't believe that Hassan has lied to me. I, I have to go and talk to him now. <laughs> That's okay, brothers. When we finally unite under the Caliph Tate, we'll bring her back into Islam by force. Or we'll die trying and receive our 72 virgin reward, just like back in the days of our blessed prophet. Well, that's all the time we have for today. See you again soon for another episode of Rationalized Assertions.